Bitcoin would be $5 million a coin. 99% of all the Bitcoin that will ever be issued will have been issued. I think that we're living through the Bitcoin gold rush era. And I think the Bitcoin gold rush era started January 2024. And I think it runs until around November 2034. So it's about 10 years. And I'll tell you why. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. Michael Saylor will share his insights on how he explained why mainstream investors are missing out on the opportunity of Bitcoin, how he discussed why Bitcoin is not a currency, how he revealed how the Bitcoin ETF in Canada and the U.S. have accelerated the adoption and appreciation of Bitcoin, how he predicted that we are in the Bitcoin gold rush era, which will last until 2034. Let's join Michael Saylor in this interview about these topics and more. Mainstream investors, they have all the money, right? Nine, there's $900 trillion of wealth out there. There's only $1 trillion in Bitcoin. So 99.9% .9 of the money of the wealth it's not invested, right, in the asset class. So a lot of people that don't understand what this is have a lot of money, and yet we've got a 10-year period when there's going to be an explosive increase in education, right? As Bitcoin, Bitcoin's going to go up, and as the price goes up, more people are going to get asked, and they're going to, like, reject. They're like, stop asking me. I hate talking about this. Like, we don't we don't like it because it's not it's like gold it doesn't generate cash flows or they don't understand if you don't understand uh, perfect money right what what's what's wrong with gold gold has admissions gold is inflationary that's why it doesn't work if you don't understand that then you don't understand why digital gold is better than gold so you don't understand Bitcoin you don't understand money. And then you haven't really thought very deeply about property theory or capital theory. So you definitely don't understand digital capital, which means you don't understand digital energy, which means that when someone asks you, you're going to buy it, your answer is, of course, I'm not going to buy it. I don't get it. But when I say to people, right, like if everybody underst if everybody read all these books, if they listen to all your podcasts, if they listen to all my podcasts, if they thought about it for a few hundred hours, tomorrow they would wake up, they would all buy Bitcoin, and Bitcoin would be $5 million a coin. Bitcoin versus gold, 10 experts told us which asset they'd rather hold. A survey of 10 experts revealed different opinions on whether Bitcoin or gold is a better investment for the next 10 years. Some favored gold for its stability in history, while others preferred Bitcoin for its potential and innovation. Saylor argued that Bitcoin is a superior asset class to gold and other traditional investments, and that most of the wealth in the world is not yet invested in it. He predicted that Bitcoin's price will rise as more people learn about it, and that if everyone read his books and podcasts, they would all buy Bitcoin and drive its price to $5 million per coin. So that being the case, really, um, this 10 years is your best chance to get Bitcoin, right? This is the gold rush. Because this is the period where there's still a lot of FUD. There's still a lot of uncertainty. Uh, people still aren't sure. They don't understand digital energy. They don't understand digital capital. They don't understand digital property. There's a lot of debate in the community. Is Bitcoin a currency or is it a property? Or, you know, there, there's massive debate. A lot of people say, well, it's a currency. And since it's not legal tender or because it, it doesn't move fast enough or I can't buy coffee with it, it's not a good currency. So there's a lot of confusion in the crypto community. Um, there's a lot of mainstream regulators. They think it's currency. So you see bankers say, oh, it's a currency, but it's not a good currency because I can't buy coffee with it. I can't buy things online with it. And it's too, it's too volatile. And they think that's a criticism. And so they criticize it. And then people that think that they know what they're talking about they hear some famous person say, well, Bitcoin is not a good currency. And 
you know, or the government will ban it, or it's not as good as the doll or something. And so they get afraid. And they say, well, then I trust that guy, so I'm not going to buy it. So a lot of people are criticizing it for the wrong reason. A lot of people misunderstand it, you know, and and that creates lots of chaos, misinformation, stupid, you know, stupid, misleading stories in mainstream media. It creates uh, it creates like bad takes on Twitter. It creates all sorts of confusion amongst Wall Street analysts. And so all of that fear, uncertainty and doubt and just basic confusion and then misunderstanding it, that causes uh, a slow growth in demand, right? Like demand is growing, but imagine how much faster it would be growing if everybody had spent 100 hours, right? Right. The people that criticize it, there's no way Warren Buffett spent 100 hours studying Bitcoin, right? There's no, there's not likely that everyone that criticizes it spent 100 hours studying it. They haven't read the Bitcoin standard. They probably haven't listened to 20, 30, 40 hours of podcasts, right? Bitcoin's pre halving jitters, historical trend spotlight, potential price tip ahead of 2024 event. The possible price movements of Bitcoin before and after the halving in April, based on past patterns and indicators. Bitcoin may experience a correction before reaching new highs later this year. Robert Kiyosaki predicts U.S. collapse, Peter Schiff warns of BTC massacre, grayscale study on BTC halving and more. The opinions and predictions of prominent figures in the crypto space, such as Robert Kiyosaki, Peter Schiff, and Michael Saylor. Also, there's a study by Grayscale that shows how the halving could affect the supply and demand dynamics of Bitcoin. We started out the year with the ETF approval, and that was a big milestone. I think that the success of the ETFs is another uh, another milestone. Uh, I think that the halving in April will be a third positive milestone. I think those three things are going to drive momentum, and I think I think all the marketing wars between the Wall Street firms is is uh, is going to be positive, and I think that I think the assets being normalized throughout the mainstream investment community, and so I think it was keep generating momentum from here. I think it's um it's also worthwhile, I think, to make one point. I think that we're living through the Bitcoin gold rush era. And I think the Bitcoin gold rush era started January 2024. And I think it runs until around November 2034. So it's about 10 years. And I'll tell you why. Because 93.5% or so of the Bitcoin was mined at the beginning of this period. But in November of 2034, 99% of all the Bitcoin that will ever be issued will have been issued. And so that that having is is uh, very symbolic. People talk about Bitcoin, you know, issuance coming out over the next hundred years, all the way till 2140. But the truth of the matter is, the last hundred years, you're only getting one percent. So I think, and and actually, of that one percent, ninety basis points of it is coming in the in the twelve years that follow twenty thirty four, and then it's ten basis points, a tenth of a percent. But but practically speaking, all of the block rewards are de minimis starting in twenty thirty four. It's it's you know one percent over a hundred years may as well be nothing because you know the daily volatility and the daily trading volume is going to render that to be somewhere between third order, fourth order, fifth order of magnitude. Ether hits $3,000 for first time in nearly two years amid rising ETH ETF excitement. The surge of Ether, the native cryptocurrency of Ethereum, to a new high of over $3,000. The rally to the growing interest and demand for ETH ETF, which offer investors exposure to the second largest crypto without having to deal with custody and security issues. How Asia drives the next crypto bull market. The role and influence of Asia in the global crypto market, especially in terms of innovation, regulation, and adoption. Asia is leading the way in developing and embracing new technologies and use cases for crypto, such as DeFi, NFTs, and Web3. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. 
Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.